Hi everyone, I'm Shelly and you're watching There's No Place Like Home. I'm back with another video and today's topic is this. They just make it up as they go along, don't they? I was pondering what today's video should be about when this hysterical article just happened to pop up on my feed that I thought I would share with you all. It was like a gift. 12 billion light years from Earth, NASA has discovered a massive reservoir of water containing 140 trillion times the water on Earth. Oh, I wonder how they know that. Let's, let's read a little bit about this. This marks one of the most astonishing ast astronomical breakthroughs of our time. 12 billion light years from our blue planet, NASA scientists have identified a concentration of water vapor more than 140 trillion times greater than all the water on Earth. This revelation shakes up our understanding of the early universe and opens new perspectives on the ubiquity of this life essential element. Wow, that's amazing. They, they discovered something 12 billion light years from our planet? Holy cow. All right, let's just read some more. In 2011, astronomers detected this gigantic reservoir surrounding the quasar. I'm not going to say that whole thing. The discovery takes us back to a time when the universe was only 1.6 billion years old, long before the Milky Way even existed. The presence of such vast amounts of water in the early universe challenges existing theories about cosmic evolution. This reservoir exists in an environment of extreme conditions. The temperature there is minus 63 degrees Celsius. Wait, how far away is it? 12 billion light years away? It can tell the temperature there? Huh. Our weatherman can't even get the weather right half the time in our in our local region. OK, so the temperature there is minus 63 degrees Celsius. Amazing that they can tell that, which is five times higher than the average observed in similar galactic regions. Oh, this is something they do pretty often, I guess. Even more astonishing, the density of water vapor is 100 times greater than what is typically measured elsewhere in comparable areas. So they can do this all the time? Unlike in our galaxy, where water is mainly found in frozen form in comets and certain planets, the, the water surrounding the quasar exists as vapor and spans several hundred light years. This unique configuration results from the intense radiation emitted by the quasar. Wow. Well. I'm not going to read the rest of this article to you. you I'll link it in the description box. But I, let's let's take a look at this. So we can tell that a quasar 12 billion light years from Earth has a temperature of minus 63 degrees Celsius. And we can tell that it has a water vapor more than 140 time, trillion times greater than all the water on Earth. That is amazing. Let, hmm. Let, let's look into what do they know about our Earth? Drilling deep. How far have we gone under Earth's crust? Numerous operations have set out to dig miles deep into the Earth's crust. None of them have penetrated below the outer crust, leaving many mysteries hidden within the mantle and deeper layers of our planet. Okay, hold on a minute. So there are mysteries in the layers of our planet, but they can tell something 12 billion light years away? When Jules Verne published Journey to the Center of the Earth in 1864, multiple unsubstantiated hollow earth theories were alive and well, speculating about what might exist deep beneath our feet. That's because by many measures, we know less about Earth's interior than we know about outer space. Well, I'll say that sure seems like that's the case. We can tell 12 billion miles away anyway. 12, sorry, 12 billion light years, not even 12 billion miles, 12 billion light years away still we can confidently say it is dense we're talking about the earth's crust again and made up of multiple compact layers that humans have failed to reach despite multiple attempts 
Various operations have set out to drill the deepest hole on Earth. Even after penetrating through many miles of our planet's outer crust, none of them have reached the mantle or the other layers buried beneath it. And just to cut this short, the farthest that they have ever dug into the Earth's crust is, oh, right here it is. 7.6 million miles, or million, <laughs> they wish. 7.6 miles, that's how deep they have been able to dig into our own crust, they say, 7.6 miles. And everything underneath there is a mystery. But we can tell things that are 12 billion light years away. And indeed, you know, this even tells us that we know more about outer space than the Earth. Why is that the case? Who knows? But apparently that must be true. Okay, so let, let's forget about the crust. What about the ocean? We must know everything about the ocean by now, right? Let's see. The deep ocean, a place so different, filled with strange life forms. But what's down there? How much do we know about it? As it turns out, not very much. 95% of the ocean remains unexplored most of which is considered the deep ocean. Wait, so they're, they're not sure what is happening in the deep ocean of our own planet, but they know what's happening 12 billion light years away? Now, to be fair, I read another article that said 80% of the ocean remains unexplored, but that still doesn't that that still doesn't explain how we know so much about something that is supposedly 12 billion light years away and we know so little about the ocean on the place where we live okay but what exactly is the deep ocean the first 200 meters of the ocean are the open ocean much of the marine life we know of lives here where there is light below 200 meters where there is little light left you enter the twilight zone once you pass 1,000 meters, the water is completely devoid of light and you have reached the deep ocean. Down here, temperatures plummet to 39 degrees Fahrenheit and constantly stay near freezing. The, the pressures at these depths range from about 40 to over 110 times the pressure of Earth's atmosphere. But how could anything thrive in these conditions? It was originally thought that life cannot survive without light. We, we now know that despite this lack of light, many creatures can live in this extreme place, such as microorganisms in hydrothermal vents, deep sea corals, fish, and many other bizarre creatures. So what I understand from this is that there are things that scientists used to hypothesize about the deep ocean that are not the case. How much more is it the case with space, as they call it? or a place that they say is 12 billion light years away. So if we have all of this knowledge of something so far away and so little knowledge of our own Earth's crust or so little knowledge of our own ocean, you know, that makes me think about the astronauts. I wonder how far, how far can we travel in space with the current technology? Because if you remember, in 1969, they were able to travel to the moon, like no mishaps or anything, just bam, they were able to get there in 1969, have a phone call in one of those missions, no problem. But I wonder how far we can travel now, because it certainly doesn't seem like we can go to the moon now. With current technology, humans can travel as far as the International Space Station in low Earth orbit for prolonged stays or conduct brief sorties to the moon, whereas uncrewed spacecraft have reached interplanetary distances, including Mars and beyond. Theoretical advances suggest the potential for future travel to more distant locations within our solar system, but these technologies are not yet realized. Wait a minute. Okay, so we're in 2025 and humans can travel as far as the International Space Station in low Earth orbit. Well, how far is that? Okay, low Earth orbit, region of space where satellites orbit closest to Earth's surface. There is no official definition of this region, but it is usually considered to be between 160 and 1,600 kilometers, so about 101,000 miles above Earth. 
Satellites do not orbit below 160 kilometers because they are affected by atmospheric drag. Let's go down here. I'd like to see where the International Space Station goes. The ISS maintains an orbital distance of 400 kilometers or 249 miles and travels at approximately 4.8 miles per second. So according to that other article, the manned space stations or spacecraft can go about as high as the ISS, which is 249 miles. They went to the moon in 1969, right? Or was it 1968? My memory might be deceiving me. Okay, I was right, it was 1969. But now I decided to look up how far away the moon is because if the manned spacecraft today in 2025 can get up to, you know, they, they can go up, up to about 249 miles. What about in 1969? How far away is the moon? Because I don't think it's 249 miles away. I think, you know, it's a little bit farther than that. But the average distance from the Earth to the moon is about 238,855 miles. This distance can vary with the moon being as close as about 226,000 miles at its nearest point and about 251,000 miles at its farthest point. Wow. They must have really had much more advanced technology in 1969 than they do now. Because if we can only get 249 miles up now and they could go 238,000, well, okay, we'll even say 226,000 miles if they went when the moon was at its closest. I wonder what kind of technology they had. Let, let's see. Okay, this looks like a good one. Your mobile phone versus Apollo 11's guidance computer. Hmm, well, of course that guidance computer is gonna far surpass any cell phone, that's crazy. It is often said that we now have more computing power in our pocket than the computer aboard Apollo 11 did. But is that true? And if so, how much more powerful are our phones? And I should point out that astronauts haven't been to the moon since 1972. That's, that's longer than I've been alive. All right, well, let's see. On board Apollo 11 was a computer called the Apollo Guidance Computer. It had 2,048 words of memory which could be used to store temporary results, data that is lost when there is no power. This type of memory is referred to as RAM or random access memory. Each word comprised 16 binary digits or bits with a bit being a zero or a one. This means that the Apollo computer had 32,768 bits of RAM memory. In addition, it had 72, is that kilobytes? I'm not very tech savvy, of read-only memory or ROM, which is equivalent to 589,824 bits. This memory is programmed and cannot be changed once it is finalized. All right, well, for those of you who don't know much about the kilobytes and bits and everything, how does that compare to our phones? To put that into more concrete terms, the latest phones typically have four gigabytes of RAM. That is 34,359,738,368 bits. This is more than 1,048,576, to be exact, times more memory than the Apollo computer had in RAM. Oh. The iPhone also has up to 512 gigabytes of ROM memory. That is, oh boy, big number here, 4 trillion, 398 billion, 46 million, 511,104 bits, which is more than 7 million times more than that of the guidance computer. Huh. But memory isn't the only thing that matters. The Apollo 11 computer had a processor. Okay, that must be where it makes up for it. An electronic circuit that performs operations on external data sources, which ran at 0.043 megahertz. The latest iPhone's processor is estimated to run at about 2,490 megahertz. Apple do not ad advertise the processing speed, but others have calculated it. This means that the iPhone in your pocket has over 100,000 times 
the processing power of the computer that landed man on the moon 50 years ago. And I don't know, that just doesn't make sense to me. Then why can't we go back to the moon today or farther? We should be able to go much farther. I mean, we, we know things about things that are 12 billion light years away, right? What, what's going on here? I don't know. I wonder if they have some pictures of these, oh, these things that they use to get them to the moon. Let's see. Ah, here we go. Well, that, okay. Apollo 10 command module. That, they use that? All right. Oh, this looks like, I don't even know what this is. This looks like something that one of my children would have made, you know, when they would bake stuff out of boxes and everything. They used to love to make things out of recycled materials that this, this looks like that, but this is a view of the interior of the Apollo 10 command module showing the three couches for the astronauts. Oh, this, isn't this funny? This, this also does look like, I know other people have mentioned that this looks like aluminum foil or some kind of fancy gold foil that maybe you'd use for like birthday presents or something. And then some cardboard boxes and then maybe some dowels. This is a replica of the Apollo 11 lunar lander. How did they even fit in that? It seems like it would, they wouldn't have even, it wouldn't have carried that much weight. I don't know. Does it show anything else? Oh yeah. That, huh? I don't know. I, I'm starting to think that maybe they haven't been telling us the truth about all of this stuff because you know, it just doesn't make sense to me. How could we go to the moon 226,000 miles away in 1969, even though their computers were terrible and our phones that everyone carries around in their pocket is far, 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 far surpasses these computers, but we can't go into space today. And we also don't know anything about our ocean or about what's inside the earth, but we know about things that are 12 billion light years away. I don't know. This, this whole thing seems rather fishy to me. What do you think? If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed and would like to hear more of what I have to say, I would love if you would do that. If you have any questions or comments, you can leave them down below. And if you like my work and would like to become a channel member, I will leave a link in the description box for that as well. Or you can just click on it right on my channel page. And I hope you have a great day.